Alright guys and welcome to my ninth video games pickup video. I'm sorry if I start sneezing and coughing my guts up halfway through this video but I do have a very serious case of man flu and if I sneeze one more time I'm pretty sure some major extremities of my body are going to start flying off. It's that bad. Basically I'm dying. Anyway, as usual I'm going to get straight stuck in and I'm not going to start with Playstation this time, I'm going to start with first addition to my boxed Sega Mega Drive collection. I know I said I was going to start collecting Master System games but I still haven't managed to get my hands on a Master System yet so I figured I might as well start picking up Mega Drive games while the console sat there and the game I picked up I made a serious effort to make this first game I picked up. I got it in the wild and I'm glad I did and it was one of my first ever Mega Drive games back in the day and it's essential to anyone's collection and that is a box copy of Street Fighter 2. This, what what can you say about Street Fighter 2? This is just a fucking classic. It's not in the best condition, but it is complete. As you can see, the manual has quite a few scuff marks on it. And the thing that annoys me, and I'm going to have to get a replacement box for this so I can find one, is it doesn't have the fucking hangy tag at the bottom, and that is a serious annoyance for me. But this game is fantastic. I'm so happy to own it. One thing about the cover that annoys me is it's obviously been a sticker at some point over the Mega Drive logo and it's peeled off when somebody's tried to peel it off. But you know what, I'm really happy to have this. I'll replace it a lot later down the line with a better copy, but I couldn't be happier with this. Many hours are going to be spent on it. Right, next we have a PlayStation 1 game, which is Pink Panther Pinkadelic Pursuit. That's quite a tongue twister. Now, I know fuck all about this game. I haven't played it yet. It looks like a platformer. It doesn't actually look too shabby at all. I remember having a point and clink, clink? Point and click pin, pink panther game for the PC way back when, and I really enjoyed that, and I was hoping this was point and click as well. Stupidly, I didn't look at the back of the case in the charity shop, but 50p, can't go wrong. I'm sure it's good. It's a 2D platformer, you can't really go too wrong with that. Okay, next we have the inevitable massive pile of PS2 games because you can pick them at cheapest chips in pretty much any shop across the nation. And there really is a big pile of them this time. I'm not going for a PS2 collection, I just keep seeing games I want. That game has that console has such a massive catalogue, it's unreal. But anyway, the first game I picked up well actually it wasn't the first game I picked up. The first game to hand is Warhammer 40,000 Fire Warrior. Now I'm not a big fan of Warhammer games. Oh, sorry, my throat is tingling. I am going to die. Um, yeah, I'm not a massive fan of Warhammer games or first person shooters, but the reason I picked this up is because freaking Brian, Brian? Brian Blessed and Tom Baker voice acting. Fucking Doctor Who and Brian Blessed. You cannot go wrong with that. So I'm going to enjoy playing this for the uh, voice acting alone. Who knew that Brian Blessed ever did voice acting for a game? Next we got Sonic Mega Collection Plus. Can't really go wrong with this. Picked it up. 50p. Really, really cannot go wrong with that. Next, which I'm pretty sure this is the final addition to the collection of the series and that's Spyro uh, Hero's Tale on the Playstation 2 I loved this game back in the day I know a lot of people say the series died after the first game but I really really enjoyed this game right next we have Time Crisis 2 oh, I'm not playing this yet until I get a light gun and I think the light guns go for about £10 on Amazon at the moment. I'm waiting until I find one cheap. I'm not willing to pay that considering the game was, well, not even like a fucking fifth of the price of the gun. But um, I loved the original Time Crisis. Actually, thinking about it, I do have a light gun for the PS1. Does anyone know if that will work with Time Crisis 2? That'd be interesting to know. That would save me a few bob if it did. I'm doubting it though. Anyway, I really look forward to playing this. Can't really go wrong with the arcade shooter. Next we've got Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith. Not played this, no idea what to expect. Next we have 
a double, but I saw it so cheap I just had to pick it up. It felt wrong not picking this up because I picked up a ton of games together and it would have felt weird just leaving this in the shop with it. And that's Ratchet and Clank 2, locked and loaded. Still not played this. Next we have Destroy All Humans 2. Destroy All Humans are great games. I've not played this one, but I'm sure it's going to be fun. Next we have another double in not the best condition, but you know it's worth a lot more than 50p, that's for sure. And that's Kingdom Hearts. If anyone wants this, by the way, leave me a comment. I'm up for trades. I know this is a fairly desirable game. Next we've got the first Ratchet and Clank. We'll be getting stuck into this ASAP. Not played it before and I really, really look forward to playing it. And lastly, for the PS2, we've got Broken Sword, The Sleeping Dragon. I cannot wait to play this game. I'm really sorry about that. Bloody, I am dying. I think I'm actually going to die on this chair. But yeah, I cannot wait to play this. The first Broken Sword game is absolutely fantastic and I'm sure this is going to be in the same league. Okay, next, I picked up one PS3 game. It's not in the best condition, and it is an exclusive. I'm going for a full exclusive collection on the PS3, which I know isn't a lot of games, but I want to get the entire catalogue of games from this generation, so every game on the 360, exclusives and non-exclusives, exclusives for the PS3 and exclusives for the Wii. I know that's quite a heavy task, but I've got the rest of my life to bloody try and do it. Anyway, yeah, that game is Haze. I've never ever played this. I remember being really intrigued about it when it first came out. I mean, it's, it's really not in good nick. But there's a massive gash across the case. A bit of a crack at the bottom. And it annoys me because it's got a plain white side. And it doesn't have a manual. But you know what? I got this for cheap of chips. A couple of quid. And the thing I love about... PS2 games, and I know it's because they're in Blu-ray cases, but the artwork underneath the disc in the manual is usually phenomenal, and this is a really good example of that. I look forward to getting stuck into this, that's for sure. Okay, next I picked up a GameCube game. Very happy to have this one. It's not really my kind of game, but I have played this a lot in the past, and it is a hell of a lot of fun. That game is SSX Free. This game was bloody just out of this world when it first came out I just couldn't believe it I had so much fun on it and there's a side of the case which is great virtually all GameCube games have coloured sides and that I love that it just really makes them stand out but yeah very happy to have this in my collection okay next we have a Wii game and I hadn't heard a lot about this game and I only picked it up because I watched a top 10 Easter eggs and video games video and this game happened to be there because it had a Mega Man 2 reference in the game and I, I literally heard nothing about it and the thing that really cut the deal for me is I found out it was a Capcom game and that game is Zack and Wiki Quest for Barbaros Treasure I'm probably saying that wrong but this game is absolutely fucking fantastic it's like a cross it's like Zelda if it was made by Capcom and made into a point and click adventure game I know that sounds strange, but this is very, very good. If you haven't played it, I highly recommend it. I actually ordered this from HMV, and it's the last time I'm going to order from HMV because the case is covered in dings. It's got fucking God knows what stain marks on the case. No manual, the disc is in my Wii at the moment, but it was actually shipped to me like this. Security tags inside the case, which are impossible to get off. But yeah, the game was shipped to me like this. Took took the case out, opened it. What the fuck? There's no game. But back in the jiffy, there was a little orange envelope with a disc separate. So someone's gone. Oh, there's an order. Zach and Wiki got it. In the jiffy. Oh, we need the disc in the drawer. I'll just shove it in there. I'm far too lazy to put it in the case. It was it's just disgusting. I don't care if I only played a fiver for this game. You expect better customer service, especially for a well established mainstream chain store. It's really not acceptable 
disgusting. Won't be ordering from them again, that's for sure. Oh, I feel like death. Anyway, next we got two Xbox original games. Sorry, I thought I was going to cough then. Then you just take that. that. I'm very happy to own. They're not rare games by any means, but I'm so glad I found them. Cheap as hell as well. Well, one of them I ordered online, but one of them, this one I came across in the wild. And that game is SNG versus Capcom. You cannot go wrong with this. This is an absolutely cracking game. I'll we'll be doing a gameplay on this because it is so enjoyable. Um, the Street Fighter characters are done in an SNK style, and it, it's really interesting to see them control the way that they would in like the King of Fighters universe. I'm sure it's King of Fighters. I'm, I'm sure SNK is King of Fighters. I could be wrong though. But um, yeah, this is a fantastic game, and it's a bloody worthy addition to my collection. Got a nice side as well, as most Xbox originals do. Now, that's a good beat 'em up, but this one, it's just out of this world good. And that game is Capcom Fighting Jam. Now, I ordered this game online, and the seller actually threw in like ten packets of sweets in with a jiffy. God knows why, it really freaked me out when I opened it and they just fell everywhere. Um, this game is absolutely phenomenal. If you own an original Xbox and you are a beat em up fan and you don't own this game, there is something wrong with you because honestly it is absolutely fucking fantastic. I will be doing a gameplay of this as well, maybe I'll tie them into the same video, I don't know. I'll probably make them both two separate Twist Twiddling Fun episodes. The one thing with this game that disappoints me, and it's pathetic, I know, it has a plain white side. So much potential to carry it on. Look, his fist even just gets cut off. Just pure laziness. Especially considering the disc has some completely separate and unique artwork on it as well. It's unacceptable. Anyway, this is an absolute phenomenal game, and I highly recommend it to any beat em up fan. I'm actually thinking of expanding my Xbox original beat em up collection because that control pad is just made for fighting games so they control so beautifully. Okay, now next we have a handful of Xbox 360 games. Bet you weren't expecting that one. Right, um, first up is Where the Wild Things Are. Surprisingly this is actually a pretty enjoyable game. Glad I picked it up. I'll definitely be giving that one a playthrough. Next is Spider-Man Edge of Time. Now this game is fucking fantastic. I very rarely do this with games, but I did with this one, and that was the second I got it, I put it in the console, and I finished it from start to end in one sitting. Didn't stop for a drink, didn't stop for food, just played through the entire thing. It was that enjoyable. If you'd played Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions, I think it was called, it controls a lot like th that, but the way the levels are set out is completely different. In Shattered Dimensions, it was just level one plays this character, level two plays this one. Whereas this, you just play as the Amazing Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2099. And I don't really want to ruin any of the story or anything, but you basically switch and change with them simultaneously as the story goes along. It's really smooth. You don't even realise that the level's changing. And it has some really cool mechanics in this game. Like if you do something in the Amazing Spider-Man universe, it will change something in the Spider-Man 29 universe. It's all set in the same building. I really don't want to get ruin the story, but it's absolutely fantastic. There's loads of references to other Marvel characters like Phoenix, Juggernaut, Captain America. Actually, gets quite a lot of mentions. And the first boss fight uh, with a character called Anti Venom which is just Venom, but he's white, I don't know the backstory behind him, he's quite a new Marvel character as far as I'm aware, but it was just absolutely fantastic, just out of this world, I really love this game, it's a brilliant Spider-Man game, if you're going to get any Spider-Man game in your Xbox 360 collection, make it this one, I really hope they do another game with the other two Spider-Man characters from Shadow Dimensions in it, anyway, I'm jabbering, next is two games I probably won't play, but I'm happy to have them anyway, first being Operation Flashpoint Dragon Rising. Now I've heard that this game is ridiculously hard 
Hang on, I forgot something with the previous games. I said I was going to do this in my videos from now on and I'm bloody going to stick to it. They both have coloured sides. Fantastic. Happy with that. Anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, Flashpoint Dragon Rising. Um, all I've heard from this game is, is that it's insanely hard. Now, I'm not a fan of realistic first-person shooters anyway, so it's a massive turn-off for me to find out that it's incredibly hard because I'm very much just a run-and-gun player. Unreal Tournament has trained me to do that. I can't play strategically. Maybe I'll give it a go on co-op at some point and that will get me into the single player, but who knows. <coughs> very sorry about that. Next is another game in a similar vein, and that's Homefront, the ignore the multiplayer Mac pack bollocks because I've got this pre-owned and all the codes have been used, unfortunately, but what do you get? You buy a game pre-owned, you should expect it now. Very sad thing. Um, yeah, I've, the only thing I've heard about this game is that it's this fucking balls hard again. It's realistic first-person shooter. I have more interest in playing this one than Flashpoint. Rintrest? Where the hell did that come from? I'll probably play through this one first. This has a fantastic soundtrack as well. I came across a Metallica 1 cover by a band called Periphery, which if you don't know that, they're a progressive metal band. Gay as hell vocals, but um, they do the song justice, funnily enough, if you ignore the vocals to a certain extent. But yeah, um, I kind of want to play through this but listen to the other soundtrack. Anyway, moving on. That has a coloured side as well. So does Flashpoint. Which I keep forgetting to show. Ridiculous. Right, next. We have Soul Calibur 5. Now, you knew I picked up this game anyway, because I did a small playthrough of it the other day. And I've played through it a lot more since then. And my opinion is still the same. It feels like a massive downgrade from Soul Calibur 4. It is a good game, but it feels like a downgrade to me because I used to play in the Versus Special mode. For those of you who haven't played that but are familiar with the Soul Calibur series, basically when you create your character in Soul Calibur 4, you get to choose armor and create your character how it looks. But certain armor has certain attributes, like you could put on a armored helmet and it will put your health through the roof but it will slow you down and there's all sorts of special equipment that can do stuff like that and you go in special mood and mo uh, mode and these effects take place and you could be fighting against a character with half a health bar that is speedy as hell while your character is really really slow but has two health bars and it was really interesting to play against people's unique and homemade characters in that sense but in this game they've taken all of that away and it's such a shame because for me that mode was something that really set the Soul Calibur series apart from any other Soul uh, beat em up. Real shame. I'm not a fan of all the new characters they've put in this as well. They've taken away some much loved characters such as Tacky and Rock and it's... I, I can't get on with it because of that. I, they should have kept the old ones in there as special unlockables and put the new ones in on top of that. I know that's a lot to ask, but I miss them too much. Especially Tacky, which was one of my main fighters. But as I say, it is a good game, but it just if you're going to get a Soul Calibur game, retail wise, get Soul Calibur 4 for 360. If you're going to get it from uh, the arcade marketplace, definitely stick to the original Soul Calibur, because that game is just a diva. And lastly, for my pickups and 360 pickups. <coughs> I'm so sorry about that. I should have waited till I was better, really, but fuck it. It's been two days since I did a video, and I'm feeling the itch. What did I do that for? I don't know. Right, yeah, lastly is Assassin's Creed Revelations. I got this game for about a tenner from Blockbuster on Deal of the Week or something. I don't know. But, um,. I was in one of those moods where I was in the store and I 
couldn't find anything I want, but I really wanted to buy something before I went home, and that's a bad mood to be in because you usually end up buying crap that you don't want. But uh, kind of glad to pick this up because it's a weird thing with Assassin's Creed. When it first came out, I bought and played Assassin's Creed One. I didn't finish it though. I didn't even get far into it. I fucking hated it. A really, really terrible game. I, I don't like it at all. I don't like the whole Eastern European feel to it. I don't like the characters. Didn't like the way it moved. Didn't like the way that if a certain amount of suspicion got raised about your character, you had to run all the way back to some safe house. Really didn't like it. But then Assassin's Creed 2 came out. I bought that. And it sat on my shelf for a really, really long time. Assassin's Creed. Brotherhood came out, so I bought that and I played through Assassin's Creed 2 because of it in preparation to play Brotherhood and I absolutely adored Assassin's Creed 2. If you put off the Assassin's Creed series because of the first game, just ignore it exists and think that the series starts with number 2 because that game is fantastic. But anyway, I finished Assassin's Creed 2 and Brotherhood just sat on my shelf, never to be touched, and I figured, you know what? If I buy Revelations, it's going to encourage me to play through Brotherhood and in turn eventually get to this. Because when Assassin's Creed 3 comes out, I'll probably buy this and then be encouraged to play Assassin's Creed 3 anyway because it's an entirely new character. But weirdly enough, this one actually looks very good. I'm near the end of Brotherhood at the moment and it's n nothing, nothing on number 2. I'm hoping this is going to... Going to... Um, be just as good as number two. The thing with Brotherhood that I didn't like was you start out the game with absolutely everything. You feel like it is just a perfect continuation from uh, Assassin's Creed 2. Even the way he looked, he looked exactly how I left my character on Assassin's Creed 2. And they basically go, here's your character, here's everything you can achieve in the game, and then they rape you. They take all your armour and all your weapons away and you have to start from scratch and I fucking hate it when games do that because it's like awesome character, shit character, enjoy. Not good at all. This game has annoyed me as well because it actually has a plain black side and the reason that pisses me off is because all the other games have a plain white side and it, <laughs> it doesn't go along with the series. Anyway guys, this is got to have been a fairly long video by now with tons of cuts and edits because I keep coughing my guts up. I'm going to have a recount of my Xbox 360 collection begrudgingly at some point this week and do a full video on my entire collection, maybe say something about every single game there and I'm positive there's around 300 games there now. I did have a list going of them at one point but I actually miscounted them and I included uh, some arcade bundle packs in there and I want to remove them from the collection because they should be classed as arcade games so yeah look forward to seeing a full collection video of that soon not full collection a full my collection video of them some point in the future anyway I am babbling like hell my throat is tickling I really need a drink and a bloody good sausage sandwich to bring my health back up anyway hope you enjoyed it cheers guys see ya Oh, and one more thing before I go on a completely unrelated subject. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. One more thing on a completely unrelated subject before I go. That's what I should have said. I'm babbling already. Bloody hell. Um, at the end of this week, maybe halfway through next week, I will be uploading two songs to my SoundCloud. One of which is that prog song which I uploaded a teaser of not too long ago. I'm very happy with the way that song came out. I wasn't going to upload it because I'm a little bit embarrassed of my own composition still but you know what, fuck it, I've really got to get over that. So that's going to be uploaded as a free downloadable. Another song which I'm going to upload middle of next week is a um, cover of the Alien vs Predator boss battle fight for Super Nintendo, if you, any of you have ever played that you'll know that that track is just fucking awesome. I've been working hard on a cover of that and a lot of it is bass and I'm really not a brilliant bass player so it's taken me quite a while to record that. And the third one, while I think of it, there's a song that I recorded a few months back now. It was related to something that made me laugh at work. It's not a serious song by all means but I'll upload that as a free downloadable. The Alien vs Predator song won't be a free downloadable because it's a cover song and I don't know what the laws are to do with copyright 
I really don't want to put that out there as free downloadable and then get fucked for it later down the line. Maybe once I learn the laws a bit more I can put it down as some downloadable somewhere along the line. Anyway, look forward to them. Cheers guys. Sorry for tacking this at the end of an unrelated video, but you know what, it's on my mind at the moment. This is my channel, I'll do what the fuck I like. In the style of a farmer apparently. You are who you are. Anyway, cheers guys. Enjoy. <laughs>